let's do a quick recap of some basic things and then we'll move on to a new concept of constructors right so uh, i hope you all remember this example of class smartphone right so we had a class called smartphone and in that class we had a private data member called intram right and then we went we had gone on to learn about the three different types of access specifiers and then we moved on to the part where we define two public functions we moved on to the part where we define two public functions one is get specification the other one is print specification right so what is the job of this get specification function its job is to take the value of ram as input from the user this was also called as initialization of the ram variable right and print specification its job was to access the value stored in ram and print it out on the terminal screen so these are the two public functions that we had gone through right so this was the very first class that we had learned class smartphone and then what do we do we go to the main function and in order to work with this class first we have to create an object of the class so how to create the object of the class write the class name followed by a space and the object name fine so we had created an object poco f1 of class smartphone and then we had called the two functions get specification and print specification on the object poco f1 so we had written poco f1 the dot operator get specification poco f1 dot print specification so that would mean that we are calling the get specification function on the members on the data members of class object poco f1 similarly we were calling print specification on the data members of object poco f1 right so this is how we had learned our first uh, example on classes and objects so do you have any doubts with this uh, implementation if you have a doubt please ask right now this is the best time to ask if you have any doubts with this program that we had done on the class smartphone sir one question i had uh, yes yeah. if we declare a sub if we can declare a sub class from there yeah we can yeah we can we will learn that that's a feature we will learn that nested classes we can have yeah so one class within another class okay we can do that yeah we will come to that that's a separate uh, you know feature of classes and that we will learn later okay okay so uh, any question based on this piece of code then please ask let's move on to today's topic and when we are discussing today's topic if you if you have any issues then uh, please don't hesitate to unmute yourself and speak okay so for today's topic we will go to constructors i hope this screen is visible uh, could you please confirm yes sir right thank you thank you so much so today's topic is constructors uh, let us increase the font size a little bit more right today's topic is constructors so in this class class 1 that we have gone through right now which of the functions was working to initialize the data member ram of class smartphone could you name the function let me repeat the question which function which of these two functions get spec and print spec was concerned with initializing or providing a value to the variable ram which was concerned with get that? spec get spec get spec okay. so all of you agree that it was get spec yes sir right very good so uh, c++ in the form of object oriented programming features provides us with something called a constructor whose job also is to initialize the objects of the class right the job of a constructor is said that it is supposed to initialize the object of the class very good so in the previous program get spec was used to assign or initialize data members of the objects of class smartphone and right now all of you agreed to this statement isn't it so next we come to another question then so what happens if we do not have a initialization function let's say in this particular program if i did not actually use this get spec function on the object poco f1 then what initial value would this variable ram take 
could you say what value it would take any idea what default so, value does the class zero. member variable have yeah yeah tell me sir zero zero right so or, any or other null. values null any other thing that comes to mind garbage value garbage values right so if uh, any other answers no sir i think also garbage value right so right okay so nice we have we have three different answers with uh, two people thinking garbage value uh, zero and null so let's check next we will check it out right we will check what value it actually has so the question right now is what default value does the class member variables have right so in this case i have only one class member variable which is ram so what default value does that variable ram have if it is not initialized that if it is not assigned a value now who is assigning value you all said that sir get spec was assigning value so let us do something let us work through this particular program and let us simply comment out the line where we are calling function get spec so this line we have commented out so it is not supposed to work right now isn't it so in this particular piece of program my class definition remains the same it contains one public member sorry one private member variable which is ram and two public function definitions the class definition is untouched what have we changed we have created an object spoke f1 of class smartphone and we have only called the print spec function without initializing the ram variable right so is my is my objective clear so we are trying to check what default initial value this variable ram will have if i do not call coids get spec and directly call print spec fine so let's check that out i hope the terminal screen is also visible to all of you yes sir right so yes, sir. the file was class1.cpp and let us just compile this it's compiled now let us simply get the output okay so i think there is still some issue right we have not saved the class okay that's the problem so now let's compile it again yeah so you can see it is uh, first of all not asking for the ram right because i have not called the function get spec it is directly accessing print spec function and what has it printed it has printed 32764 ram so what do you think which answer was correct what default value it's is garbage assigned? value it's a garbage, garbage value. value right very good so it's a garbage value that is assigned to any variable which we have not initialized on our own right so coming back to this question the answer is answer is what a garbage value is assigned to any variable that we have not initialized so please remember these things these are very 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 critical okay these are easy these are very easy to understand nonetheless but these are also very critical as questions so what happens if we are not assigning values they are taking a garbage value very good so next up there is something that uh, is today's specialty today's abstraction which is called a constructor there is something that c++ provides us with it's called a constructor and there are some features of a constructor which i have noted down here so please let us go through them and then we will uh, work with the code and find out how to use a constructor right so a constructor is said to be a special member function whose task is to initialize the objects of a class now here are two parts to this answer first of all it's a special member function and second is its task what is its task it initializes the objects of a class what do you mean by initialize the objects of a class now this definitely means it initializes the data members of the object of the class do you agree with me this part yes, when it, when i say that it initializes yes, the object of the class yeah so that definitely means that it is initializing the data members of the object of the class very true right now let's come to the first part now it's a special member function so it's a special member function so right now we are trying to tell you that constructor itself is also a function a member function of the class well and good why is it special to answer that question we'll come to point 2 it is special because it has the same name as the class right 
So the specialty of the constructor lies in the fact that it has the same name as the class. Fine. Next feature says it does not have a return type. The constructor does not really have a return type, but we are saying that it's a member function. The constructor is supposed to be a member function. Now every member function, like in the previous example, we had seen get spec. It had a return type void, isn't it? Print spec. It had a return type void, right? But we are saying that a constructor is not supposed to have a return type. So also that makes it more special, isn't it? So for that matter, only when it is a constructor, only then we can actually have a member function because it's a member function without any return type. It does not have a return type. So why have I noted down these features first? Because I want you all to keep this in mind. We will take a look at this and then we will write the same program, but using a constructor. Okay. Anyway, so it is said to construct the values of data members. Obviously, that's why the name constructor, right? It is constructing the values. It is initializing the values to the data members of a class. It is automatically called. Now, according to me, by far, this is the most important point. The constructor is automatically called or invoked when the object of the class is created, right? Please keep this statement in mind while we move on to the previous example. The constructor is automatically called when the object is created. Now let's come to this example. In this example, when I created an object POCO F1, was any other member function automatically called? No. Isn't it? I had to manually call using these two statements using the dot operator. I had to manually call the functions get spec and pin spec. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So when I created the object POCO F1, none of these functions were automatically called. No, I had to manually call them. But we are saying that a constructor will be automatically called just when I create the object. Object banali constructor to call. That's nice. That's a good thing. Right? So that's why I've written down. Remember, function get spec had to be called separately, isn't it? So when I'm saying that the constructor is automatically called when the object is created and the constructor is supposed to initialize the data members of a class, that also gives me the conclusion that when the object is created, the data members are initialized automatically. I can say that, right? <coughs> Excuse me. I can also say that since the constructor constructs the values data members of the uh, of a class, and it is automatically called on object creation. That also means that data members are initialized automatically. That is what we are expecting, right? Yes, sir. Right. So last but not the least, this sort of a um, constructor, the one we are going to learn today with without any parameters or arguments, that form of a constructor is called a default constructor. That's the name that we give it. It's called a default constructor, OK? So let's do something now. Let us simply define the same class smartphones. Let me end the commenting here. And let us define the same class smartphone. Within the same class, we will have the same structure for this class, right? It will have this RAM variable. It will have these functions, get spec and print spec, and all of the same. Initially, what will we have? We will have a private data member. We will list down the data members. So what are the data members? We have one right now. It's RAM. And next, what do we write? We write down the... Now, this. Uh, why I'm going through this again uh, with you? I'm typing out the whole thing because I want you to still, if you have any doubts with how to define a class, I want you to understand what we are doing, right? So RAM. Before RAM, I have not written anything. No access specifier is mentioned. So by default, it's private. And that is what we want it to be. Now, within public, we have some member functions. So let's say uh, void print spec right now. Void print spec. And what does void print spec contain? Void print spec is simply printing out the values. Right? RAM is equal to RAM. So this is the job of void print spec. And get spec we are not keeping because uh, we needlessly do not want to use some other function. We are trying to work with the constructor right now. We are trying to see how this constructor works as a member function, right? So we had seen one definition in the last class, 
how to define a member function outside the class also. So let's do that with the constructor. So what will we write here? We will simply write smartphone. Okay. When we are actually defining a function, any function outside the class definition, how do we uh, write it within the class? Within the class, we just write the function's return type and the function name and put a semicolon, right? Do you remember that? We had done that with the class employee. So if it was uh, with function void get spec, we would write only this. So this would be the function prototype present within the class definition. So we had gone through this. So similarly, working with the constructor right now, we had learned a few features of the constructor. It's a member function, basically. And it has the same name as the class. What is the class name right now? It's smartphone, isn't it? Yes, sir. Right. Uh, the class name is smartphone. So what should be the constructor's name? It should be smartphone. That's what we have written. Yeah. It also says that the constructor does not have a return type. It does not have a return type. So since it does not have a return type, we have not written void or int anything. No, we have just written the class name smartphone and put a semicolon. That's all. Fine. So hopefully this will be okay. This will be good enough for the compiler. And next, what are we trying to do? We have already defined print spec. Let us not work through get spec right now. Let us try to define this uh, special member function that we are calling a constructor. Okay. So if you remember, when this was any other function, we would write a return type here. So if, if we were trying to, let's say, if we were trying to define uh, uh, the function get spec, what would we uh, what would we write? Could you please tell me what we would write? Any of you? Void get, void get spec then the that uh, double colon and then class name no sir no sir no sir first smartphone mm -hmm. then double colon then void get spec uh, void smartphone no no sir not void smartphone sir so first smartphone then void get spec I guess uh, are you sure no no yes, no, no no it's void get spec then smartphone <laughs> okay no, okay. sir, it's smartphone, uh, double colon, void get spec. So I've done that program. Yes. I see. It's, I think. Uh, this is correct? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. So uh, what is correct? You are saying that here we have, we'll have get spec? No, sir. Over here. No, sir. There are smartphone. Smart, so first, we'll have smartphone, then double colon. Then yeah. void gets picked. Also, oh, void gets picked will be have uh, we'll have here, right? Yes, sir. And here we'll have nothing. Yes, sir. And then we'll define the function. That's what you're saying. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, have you worked with this form of a declaration? This looks a bit weird. Yeah, this is actually <laughs> actually weird. Uh, the thing is, that this uh, return be... type. This Five. return type stays before the uh, class name. That's all. Yes. So we uh, have a general syntax as the return type followed by the class name, followed by the scope resolution, followed by the function name. Okay. So anyway, uh, right now it's not that complicated either because uh, this uh, smartphone, it does not have a return type. It does not have anything. So basically what are we supposed to write? We are supposed to write smartphone contains smartphone that's all right and what does it do it initializes the variable ram to say four and that is its job this smartphone is said to be the constructor right that is what we studied right now it's a special member function which has no return type and it has the same name as the class class name is smartphone the name of the member function is also smartphone good and then after the class we are defining this smartphone member function which is actually the constructor we are defining the constructor how we write the name of the class and since there is no return type there's nothing to write before name of the class then we have the scope resolution operator then we have the name of this constructor itself which is the name of the member function and it has no arguments so this is blank 
right? And within the definition, what do we do? We initialize, we give an initial value to this RAM variable. So is this part clear? Be very honest. If it is not clear, just tell me that is not clear. Sir, explain it once again. Sure, positively. So when we are defining a function outside the class, when we are defining a member function outside the class, how do we do it? We write the return type of the member function followed by name of class, right? We write the return type followed by the name of class, then scope resolution followed by name of function. Function. Right? And then within brackets, we put down the statements. This is yes, how. Sir, that much is yeah, clear. yeah, yeah. So this is how a function definition outside the class looks. So now we are trying to define the function for class uh, smartphones constructor, right? So we have said that this constructor does not have a return type, isn't it? Yes. We have said that right now. So since it does not have a return type, we don't write any return type here in this definition. So we just write the name of the class. What is the name of the class? It is smartphone. smartphone. Then we have the scope resolution operator. Then we have the name of the function, which name is function. again smartphone. And the parameter list, which is an empty set of parentheses. And then within this curly brackets, what have we written? We have actually put an initial value to the variable RAM. Yes, and yes. now it's clear. So can constructors have parameters? Yeah, they can have parameters. We will come to that in the next class. They are called parameterized constructors. And what we are studying today, they are called default constructors. Of course, they can have parameters. Of course, they will have parameters. And we, we have to learn how to use parameters with constructors, okay? Okay, so uh, if this part is clear right now, then that means we have defined the constructor. We have defined the default constructor. Definition of default constructor. Okay, so this is the definition. Now, what is remaining in this uh, program? We have the class definition. We have the function definition also. What is remaining? I guess a main function is remaining. So we will simply open up int main. We will write return zero. And within the main function, we will type out the things we need to do. What do we need to do? So it is said that the constructor is automatically called when the object is created. So in order to check whether this constructor is working or not, we need to do two things. First of all, we need to create an object of the class. What is the class name? What is the class name? Smartphone. Smartphone, Smartphone. right. Uh, let the object name be Poco F1. No issue. Now we are telling you that the constructor will be called automatically when the object is created. Fine. So if uh, you believe me, if that is indeed true, that means whenever this statement is executed, this constructor will work. It will start working, right? The smartphone belonging to class smartphone will start working and it will provide an initial value of four to this member variable called RAM. Do you agree with me? Yes, sir. So why? Uh, why? So because in while making the object POCO F1, yeah, we are using the class smartphone, yeah. uh, but uh, why will that activate the constructor? Because yeah, the that is that is that is how a smartphone. Yeah, of course, and that is how a constructor works, right? So whenever oh, you are defining okay. a member function with the same name as the class, right? Whenever you are defining a member function with the same name as the class, then that becomes a constructor. And whenever you have such a function in your program, that such, that function is automatically activated. That you're saying it is automatically called whenever an object is created. That is the role of a constructor. That is why it is studied at a separate topic. Okay. So okay. unlike this get spec function, which we had, and we had to write the object name dot get spec. We had to write object name dot print spec. Unlike that, here we do not need to write smart uh, poco f1 dot smartphone. Whenever we are creating this object, 
this uh, constructor called smartphone will automatically will get invoked or called and it will initialize this variable ram to a value 4 okay now since this happens how to verify whether this value is actually 4 or not for that we will call this print spec function print spec is simply trying to access the value that is stored in ram now if you remember a few minutes back we actually checked that directly calling print spec gives us a random value isn't it we checked on the terminal screen that directly calling print spec without initializing ram gives us a random value we check this out so right now we are saying that since we have a constructor in our program it will positively initialize ram to a minimum value of 4 gb it will do that and then if we call print spec directly so within our main function what will we write we will write poco f1 dot print spec only and that's all nothing else so in terms of calling functions what are we calling we are only calling print spec we are not calling get spec or anything we are also not calling the special member function called smartphone no we are only calling print spec now in the previous case when we tried to do this in this in the case of this class when we tried to directly call only print spec so in this case look at the main function what does it contain it contains an object that is created it contains a call of print spec only get spec is commented out it won't work right so again if we try and if we execute this piece of code what do we get to see it is compiled and it again gives me a random value right so that was in the case of the class class one it did not have a constructor but in this case constructor cpp we have a constructor smartphone which is the same as the name of the class and it is supposed to take care of the initialization of the member variable ram so if we directly call print spec in this case we will get to see an output uh, value of four i hope i am clear with this so let us save const so what do we expect as an output we get to see as an output so the statement output as four. yeah ram is equal to four we expect that i don't know whether that will work or not but we do expect that so let's do const.cpp yeah so it will tell me that cout is not defined in this scope because i have not put down any header files obviously so I need to write hash include IO stream using namespace std and then the rest of my code remains the same. Let's try this out again. And it is compiled. So now it's turn for us to actually execute the program and you will find it says RAM is equal to 4. Right? So what does this mean for us? What does this actually indicate? What is the use of a constructor then? Many of you will have this question. So why bring out another topic called a constructor when we could simply write a function? So in many cases, it will so happen that you are not able to actually directly call a function on the data member to get it initialized. Right. But in many cases, you may need it to have an initial value, a standard initial value as per your requirement. Let's say I want the minimum RAM of every device to be at least 4 GB. So if someone does not even, uh, you know, try to modify the RAM value for that uh, device, the RAM will be shown as 4 GB. So let's say I have a smartphone object called POCO F1 and I have not called the get spec function. Now let us uh, use the get spec function here also. So then we can work with multiple objects and show you something. So in this case, in this code, I have get spec and I have print spec. But for POCO F1, I have not called get spec. Please keep that in mind. For POCO F1, I have not called get spec. Let us create another uh, object, 1 plus 8, right? And for 1 plus 8, I will call both the functions, get spec and print spec. <coughs> Excuse me. So for one plus eight, I am supposed to take the input from the user. 
and print it as output right so i am initializing the user is initializing ram is initialized by user and in case of poco f1 ram is initialized by constructor with default standard value so now do you understand what is going to happen do you have any idea can you guess what is going to happen so the first uh, answer will be four but right why the second object is called it will ask me for a ram value exactly and, uh, exactly very good very good correct. yeah correct correct perfectly correct so it is saying ram equal to four now that one is for poco f1 because we have not called get spec for it isn't it that's what i used was saying and all of you were agreeing and now it is asking me the ram for one plus eight so let's say it is 16. So it will say RAM is equal to 16. No issue. Right. So if I have multiple objects, it may not always be feasible to, you know, initialize all of them by taking a user input. So in many cases, I would also want to give them a standard minimum value, a standard initial value. And if that is determined as four, I can always use a constructor to do it. So two things are established here. First of all, the one that I discussed right now, the constructor is obviously giving me a standard initial value. It's helping me with that so that I don't have my variables getting random values, right? This is much better than them getting garbage values. And really, I don't have to make a separate function call. That's the second point. I really don't have to make a separate function call here, isn't it? See? I am creating the object and the comp uh, the constructor is working automatically. That's what we studied. That's what we had written here. The object okay. is created, data members initialize automatically. Isn't it? And the form of constructor that we studied today, this one, this has no parameters, this has no arguments. So this form of a constructor is called a default constructor. It's called a default constructor. There is another variation to this, which is also called the parameterized constructor. And that we will study in the next class. So a constructor can also have arguments and it could also work with those arguments just like any other function does. So in that case, it is called a parameterized constructor and that we will study in the next class. So if you have any doubts with this default constructor, please let me know right now. I assume that uh, this... Uh, discussion today was fruitful and you all could understand how and why we could use constructors okay so many a times you will find in many questions basically in problems where a code is given to you and you are supposed to understand how that code is working you will find that constructors are being used right because constructors make things a lot simple as you can see even when in cases you do not have a function to immediately initialize variables of a class, members of a class, when you do not have functions, so I'll get spec to initialize the members of the object Poco F1. Even then, the member variable RAM of Poco F1 gets the initial value 4. And the main part is you do not have to call any function explicitly. Okay. Sure. Sir, if yeah, we bolo, bolo. do not declare the constructor and mm -hmm. we directly try to use uh, the, that statement, which is smartphone, double colon, smartphone, will it work or not? If we do not, I require follow. If we do not declare the function smartphone, uh, the e constructor e smartphone. within this class, when a statement is yeah. to yeah, sir. It is not it is not Okay, sir. Because it will look for that function within the class, right? I had said one thing that the member function needs to be specified. The compiler needs to know initially that this member function belongs to the class. For that, we have to do two things. First, we have to write this statement, the name of the member function with its return type and parameter list with a semicolon. This part we have to type within the class definition itself. And then beyond the class definition, we can write the return type, then the name of the class followed by scope resolution, followed by the name of the function. 
ঠিক আছে তো আমাকে দুটোই করতে হবে আমি যদি এটা না করি তাহলে কখনোই এই স্মার্টফোন কনস্ট্রাক্টরটা বা এরকম কোনো মেম্বার ফাংশনকে এই ক্লাসের অংশ হিসেবে ধরতে পারবে না আই হ্যাভ টু টেল ইট ক্লাসের ভেতরে ওটা একটা মেনশেন থাকতে হবে ঠিক আছে কম্পাইলার কাছে কি লাগবে ব্যাপারটা যে I have this uh, member function which is which says it belongs to the class smartphone. So member function ta bolche ami to class smartphone e belong kori. Amake tumi kaj korte dicho na keno. But class smartphone er bhitor ei class tar bhitor kothao kintu ei member function er naam tuku nai. Tale ami keno bhorsha korbo? Isn't it? So that is why it look for obviously it will look for a mention of that member function within the class definition. Chetai hocche. Thik ache? Yes, so yeah. yeah so any other doubts i hope this part with constructors is clear if not uh, you can ask we will go through this same thing only with a parameterized form parameterized constructor <coughs> excuse me we will discuss the parameterized <coughs> oh, i am so sorry we will discuss the parameterized constructor in the next class also so again we will go through the same thing almost just it will have parameters right now it does not have it has a empty parameter list as you can see in the next class we will write down something here and then we'll work with it okay that's all